G'day everyone, Greg here and welcome back to the BNSF Blurred with Subvision and a happy 2022 to you all. Let's hope uh, 2022 is a little better than 2021. It's not going too well at the moment, but anyway, if we all pull together, <coughs> I'm sure we'll get through. So, speaking of pulling together, this rat situation, as you know, in my last video we were discussing rat pee and its effect on tracks and other stuff and the carnage that it's caused well I found where the rat was coming in through the corrugations in the door so we've uh, temporarily fixed that with some paper to see if he came back did push some paper out the way so we know that's how he was getting in and fix that or should I say plug that up again it hasn't been back since so I've been keeping my eye on the rat poo uh, numbers and there's been no more so that's good, so I think we got him. Uh, I just have to fix the door properly in the next week or two and we should be right. But we're still having issues with the track. This guy is pieced everywhere. So today we're going to do something different and we're going to take the gensets. We're going to get jiggy with some gensets, baby, yeah. And push my old Roco track cleaning car around with a rag on it with some inox into all the areas that I can't get to. And we will try and scrub all this rat pee off the tracks where the uh, dirty rat has been using the tracks as a highway, especially the ones that are hidden. So we'll fire up the old gen sets. These are the two that haven't been scrapped. I think just about all the others have been scrapped in the world. There's not too many left, I don't think. They were a bit of a failed experiment. A good idea in theory, but uh, I think having three prime movers in one locomotive just was just too much maintenance. And I think if you can get a normal diesel to run better, I think you're better off in the long term and shut it down. That's, that's what they have seemed to have come up with anyway. But anyway, the gen sets were an interesting idea. Uh, they, they may be okay with some small railroads or whatever, but, but uh, I've got two on here that I actually bought. The two gen sets that you'll see today were actually bought in the US in Tehachapi. How cool is that? From uh, Bob Longshadow's Model Trees, took me to his mate's train shop, model train shop that was in Tehachapi, and it, was cl it closed not long after I was there. And funny enough, they had two gensets, Atlas gensets. So they're the two that you'll see today, all the way from Tehachapi. So let's get into it, and we'll start cleaning this track, and we'll have a camera view on the train, and we'll have a normal camera, and we'll go and clean some track, and we'll go on some tracks that you don't normally see on the Birdwood Sub. So let's go. So what we're going to be doing today is we're going to begin to the areas where we can't reach, and use the old Rocol track cleaning car. Well, of course, we won't be using this abrasive pad we'll be using a uh, cloth with a bit of inox on it a couple of squirts and I'll get some whoops there we go we'll put that underneath the car and I'll run it down the track
we're going up and down that uh, loop a couple of times. Let's see how much stuff we got. Ooh, look out, look out. There we go. So we'll probably do a couple more passes on that on each row. And I can tell you now that it was that bad that it actually got stuck on the rat piss. And I had to actually push it. So there you go. So we'll do a couple more on that track and we'll move on to the Tarragandy cutoff. Okay, we stopped here now. We have to change the rag over so it's uh, going with the folded edge first, this way, so it doesn't catch on these uh, trailing edges here. So I'll just do that. So while I'm doing that, I think the best track cleaning car out there is the Aztec track cleaning cars with the rollers. And I'll tell you why. Because they were designed uh, ahead of their time. Let me just spray a bit of Vinox on here. Good to see heaps of model railroaders in the UK using Inox. Thank you very much, especially to Charlie over there at uh, Cheswick, I think it is. He's got on board with it and telling all his plummy friends about it. And also in the UK, in the uh, US. One of these KDs doesn't work at this end. You think I'd fix it, eh? The spring's gone out of it, so I've got a couple to one end only. You'd think I'd go and fix it. One day I will. Anyway. Uh, so Charlie's getting everyone on board there with uh, Inox, which is great. And in the US, people are using um, CRC, which is good. Or Inox, even better. Now, the Aztec track cleaning car, they had two rollers or one roller, depending on which one you bought. Unfortunately, they've gone into business. And the secret behind their success, or should I say, maybe their demise, was they were too clever and people didn't realize that they were ahead of their time. So they had rollers, one or two rollers that used to roll along the track like this. And you think, oh, okay, other cars have done that. There's another thing you can buy with a big roller you put in the middle and it rolls around. Ah, but the secret of the Aztec car was the roller wasn't parallel with the track. So it just didn't roll along, rolling across the dirt and hopefully some of the dirt sticking to it. The Aztec cars, the rollers were at an angle. Now, I have to do this a lot worse than what they are, but imagine the roller being at an angle like this. And as it rolled down the track, it actually scuffed to the track like that and scrubbed it. So, you know, if your car's got a bad wheel alignment, your tyres, instead of going down the road like that, your tyres are going down the road slightly like that, and they're scrubbing and wearing the rubber out. Well, this is what the Aztec car did. And the rollers, instead of going down the track, were set at a slight angle. You could hardly tell. This is the clever bit. Uh, the gentleman who designed it was an engineer, I think. And they're set at just enough of an angle that they scuff the rail and actually wipe the dirt off the rail like that as it's rotating and onto the roller rather than just the roller trundling along and hopefully picking up some crap. And of course the secret, the secret was, was to get the angle enough so it would clean the track but not make it that hard to push. And the Aztec cars apparently were very, very easy to push. And I was going to buy one because I found out that's what they were and they closed down. So if anyone knows of an Aztec track cleaning car, single or double roller, let me know. Uh, the only trouble with the Aztec, and of course the only other thing with the Aztec roller car, not trouble, but thing with them is they're not idiot proof. No, no, where's the lens? There it is there. I'm looking at the microphone. Ah, hmm. Um, they're not idiot proof. So you need to know how to use them. Some of the rollers could only go in one direction, especially the ones that you put the old crate of the um, shop rags on yourself. If you if you rolled them the wrong way, they would unroll and jam. I read reviews about people saying, "Oh, they jam all the time." No, no, it's the operator error. If you if you know what you're doing and set them up, I think they're the best track cleaning cars in the world. Unfortunately, they're ahead of their time. They're quite expensive. Um, someone needs to bring them back because they actually work, and the the actual design in them is the fact that the rollers, as I said before, and I'll say it again, so get in your bloody heads, that, well, there's a rant, there's a rant, that the roller is going down the track at a slight angle and it's wiping the rails. It's not rolling, it's wiping the rails. Brilliant idea. If anyone has an Aztec track cleaning car for sale, let me know. I will buy it, and if I had the money, I would buy the rights and I'd build the bloody things again because they're the best thing in my opinion. Right, 
So we've turned this around, we've put some inox on it again, and we're gonna go back down the main line now and do a couple of runs on that. Rant over, for now. I think the old girl needs some new axles there. That's the original axles from the oh, 80s, I think. This old thing's done some miles, and uh, I think it might be time if I can try and get some new axles for it. It is amazing, though, when you see how much rat poo and wee was on this track, uh, that how good the Inox is at keeping conductivity as uh, trains in this section uh, hardly ever stalled apart from the track cleaning train that actually got stuck but most of the other trains uh, locos would just go over it so and you can see how filthy the rag was with only a few passes so it just shows you how sprays like inox or CRC actually do work we're getting ready now to go down the Tarragini cutoff and having the camera and the torch at the front is also a really good inspection car so you can see if there's any issues with the track in the hidden areas. We have moved over to the branch line reversing loop that goes around underneath the helix. So this is a track that I use to turn complete trains and it's not used that often. So we're gonna take a tour around it today.
The tray now is entering a transition from a 750mm radius to a 1 meter radius, so that's a bit over uh, 36 inches. And this is the section of track that has inspired me to go to over a 6 foot diameter or over a meter radius on the new layout because trains look so much better just on that slightly broader curve, especially with the overhang of long equipment. Now this is another section where the train got stuck and uh, I had to send in an actual train, another train, to actually push it out because I couldn't get my hand in there to push it out. This is another favourite rat highway in here and this time he did a really good job so we had to actually drag it out with another train. But once the inox went over it once, uh, that was enough and then I could get the track cleaning train back across it about six times and it was all good. But I'm also thinking of getting a Dapol track cleaning car. It's an English thing. I think it was River Rossi or Backman originally, and it has a vacuum cleaner in it. And I think uh, not to use the track cleaning side of it, but to actually use the vacuum cleaner, because I think that would be really handy for picking up all sorts of stuff. Thank you. 
With the lower section done, it's time to move on to the helix. While a helix is a great piece of engineering, it does pose problems when it comes to track expansion. My helix has two tracks of almost 30 metres of continually welded rail, or soldered rail, and with temperature differences of nearly 40 degrees, that expansion has to go somewhere. So my track is screwed down very lightly so it can breathe, and the helix actually grows and shrinks uh, between summer and winter. So that's why you'll see the screws between the tracks to allow the tyres to slide in and out as the helix grows, and it really does happen, it moves quite a bit. With the last tunnel passed through, it's time to stable our train and call it a day. The Atlas Gen sets have done a good job, they're nice locomotives and uh, they run really well except for the oversized handrails at the front, but I think they're good looking units and well detailed. Uh, it's just a shame they didn't have EMD prime movers in them. <laughs>
Well, there you have it. That's uh, all of the inaccessible tracks cleaned with Finox today and the old Roco track cleaning car. So hopefully that will do it for a few more months. I don't have to do it in those inaccessible areas too much unless we have a visitor from the rats, but hopefully we'll sort that out. And uh, yeah, so that's good. And we've got a bit of jiggy with the gen sets today. It's good to give them a run too because they don't get too much of a run, the old gen sets. They normally switch out the grain cars here, but I haven't been doing much of that lately. So, But I do hope to be doing uh, a video of a grain train going from here, getting made up and going all the way up to our uh, oil plant, which is just above it, up here, through the whole layout and up through there. So that, that'll be coming the next, you know, I'm going to say month or so. Also, the video on wheels and DPU placements is becoming a problem. I'm not getting the results that I was hoping for. And I'll explain that probably when we do the video, but it's to do with, with the train length. We can't get enough weight in the train to re replicate the friction. And anyway, it's, I'll talk about that in the video, but it's, I've, ta I've, I've been mucking around with it for two days and all sorts of dramas and I don't think it's going to happen. But we'll explain that in the, video, but we, in the video, but we'll still go about the wheel profiles and why they place DPUs where they do in trains. All right, so that's it for something a little bit different. No fragrances today. <laughs> That was a bit of a shock, but anyway, just gotta, you know, give the old uh, fragrance community a bit of a shuffle along there every now and then. So, thank you for watching. We'll see you back on the Burwood Tub very, very soon, as Benny Hill would say. And goodbye for now. Hooray for now. Bye. Ooh, that was green. Ooh, that's lucky. Most bad today.